Thank you. 
Christmas to, to you all, and we're so glad that you're here tonight. Hope this season is finding you in a good place. You know, one of the things that I did at the <clears throat> early services today is to, to plug our Christmas Eve service a couple times during my message. So I'm going to plug something here. Um, our next series of sermons that we're looking at, starting in January, we have worship here at 10... 30 and 8 o'clock, 8 o'clock for the early risers, but we're going to be looking at um, the eternal current. You know, a lot of us stand in the shallow water, never diving in, never really experiencing either faith or even life. Um, We're going to be encouraging and looking at what it means to dive just a little deeper starting in January. So we'd love for you to join us And that, again, is at 8 o'clock and 10.30. And we're going to take some time right now to sing a Christmas carol. And we're going to sing Joy to the World. If you're able to, stand as we begin our worship together. Amen. You may be seated. I'm going to ask Dawn and Judy Miller to come forward and light our Advent candle, and we are going to sing Away in the Manger as they do that. Now the choir. Oh, 
the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. Now we have somebody that believes in the Bible, and she gives an account of her life. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will not walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. His holy light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. Thank you. 
Now I'll invite my friend Bev Kansup to read our Old Testament reading. Isaiah 9, 2 through 7. The people walking in darkness have seen a great light. On those living in the land of deep darkness, a light has dawned. You have enlarged the nation and increased their joy. They rejoice before you as people rejoice at the harvest, as warriors rejoice when dividing the plunder. For as in the days of Midian's defeat, you have shattered the yoke that burdens them, the bar across their shoulders, the rod of their oppressors. Every warrior's boot used in battle and every garment rolled in blood will be destined for burning, will be fuel for the fire. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the greatness of the government and peace, there will be no end. He will reign on David's throne over his kingdom, establishing and upholding it with justice and righteousness from that time on and forever. The zeal of the Lord Almighty will accomplish this. Amen. Word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let's take some time to pray tonight. Pray with me. <clears throat> Lord God, we thank you for the opportunity to gather to worship. And we lift up our praises. Lord, it's been a busy season. And maybe there's still gifts to be wrapped. Maybe we're still hoping something comes in the mail and we're stressing over it. But Lord, I just pray that for this moment, this time we have together, that we would be able to focus on you. And we lift up your, our praises to you. And we call you by name. We call you Prince of Peace, Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father. Emmanuel, God with us. Thank you for being here with us. You, we are never without your presence. And we thank you for that. Lord, as we, we pray this tonight, um, we, we know that... Scripture says the people were walking in darkness. And at times, we do walk in darkness. And we ask <clears throat> that you would forgive us for that. Forgive us of our sins, Lord. We pray that we would be able to focus on you. And Lord, that uh, we thank you so much for doing the work on the cross. Coming in the manger. But you came to do a work. You died and you rose again to show us that we will have eternal life. And we thank you for that. And Lord, we, we have things that are on our hearts tonight. We pray for those who are sick. Lord, there are a lot of folks right now dealing with stuff like COVID, um, RSV, uh, the flu, um, viruses, and we just lift them up. I pray for the families that texted me today to tell me that they would not be here because of such events in their life. And we, we pray for healing. We pray for those who are, are dealing with ongoing sickness that they have to go for treatments for. Things like cancer and for Parkinson's, for ALS. We lift those folks up to you. Pray for peace. And Lord, we pray for those who are taking care of those folks. We pray for those caregivers that are out there whether they're paid or they're just servants or being with a loved one, we pray for them. Give them the strength and the endurance to live out that task. A caregiver is servant work, Lord, and we pray for them. And Lord, we, we also just want to pray for those who are dealing with emotional issues. Lord, this is a, a joyful time of year, but for some of us, it is not, and we pray for those who deal with things this time of year. We pray for those who are dealing with addiction. We, we lift them up to you. We pray for those who are having financial crunches in their life, and it's a huge burden and a distraction. We pray for them. Lord, 
We also thank you for the light that you shine in our light, life. And, and Lord, as we, we thank you for that, we remember the prayer that you taught us how to say. And we pray that together tonight on this Christmas Eve, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Hey, why don't we sing Hark the Herald Angels Sing together. If you can, stand. You may be seated. And the kids, if you want to come forward for children's time, come on forward. We had a bunch at eight. Come on down, guys. Thank you guys for coming. So good evening. How are you all doing this evening? So I've got some questions for you. Are you afraid of the dark? No. You're not? No. Well, I was when I was a little girl, so that's nothing to be ashamed of. I've got another question. Do you have a nightlight in your bedroom, maybe? I do, a Christmas tree one. Oh, that's so cool. I have a Christmas tree nightlight at home, too. Well, you know, it's actually smart to have a nightlight in your room because if you get thirsty in the middle of the night and you wake up, you can actually see and you don't stub your toe, which would hurt really bad. And what about if you walk at night at your house? Like I know that you guys have animals where you've got to do chores. You probably would want a flashlight to light your way, to light your path. That way you don't accidentally step into a hole and sprain your ankle because that would hurt. So lights are a good thing because they're meant to protect us and keep us safe. So another question, if you were to choose to walk in the dark or walk in the light, which would you choose? Well, I do really like the dark, but I wouldn't want to get hurt, so I would pick the light. Yes, that is, yes, definitely you would want to walk in the light. Well, in the Bible, do you know Jesus actually talks a lot about light and darkness? Jesus said, light has come into the world. And do you know what he, who he was meaning when he said that? He was talking about himself. And Jesus also said, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. So this Christmas, we light 
the Christ candle. That's the center candle and the advent wreath. And it's also known as the candle of light. Now, do you see what color that candle happens to be? What color is that candle? It's white, like a normal Yes, it is white. And do you know why it's white? Because it shows us the purity and the light of Christ. So you might be wondering, well, what does purity mean? Well, purity means that our soul's being washed clean. So the Christ candle reminds us of the hope and the promise that we have in Jesus' birth and coming to earth and what that means. So he came. He lived a perfect, sinless life, and he died on a cross so that we could be saved. And if we admit we're sinners and we believe and receive this miraculous gift, we receive eternal life, and that means we live forever in heaven, and then our sins are washed away white as snow. So the choice is ours to make. If we live by truth, we walk in the light so that it may be plainly seen. And Jesus also said, let your light shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your father, which is in heaven. So which choice will you make? Will you walk in the light or in the darkness? So I have something for you tonight necklaces and I have one on so that you can see what it looks like and this is to help us to remember why Jesus came and to help us to shine our lights for Jesus this Christmas season but before I pass these out we need to have a word of prayer okay so let's pray Heavenly Father thank you for the best gift ever the gift of your one and only son and I pray that everyone here tonight would believe and receive Jesus help us to walk in the light of Christ not just this evening but every single day. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. And you can all take a necklace with you, okay? And before you go back to your seat. Okay. We know that part of the Christmas season is giving and so, and part of worship is giving. And so as we worship tonight and we go through the season, um, let me invite you to be a part of our offering tonight. Our offering is going to go to benefit our food pantry. And one of the things that we're finding out in our community is the numbers in our food pantry are increasing. So um, if you feel called to be a part of that tonight, it would be a blessing for those who receive it. So let's take time to worship and to to continue to uh, spend some time together this Christmas Eve. And let's lift up our praises to God who has given us so much.
Lord God, we just pray over this offering tonight, and we pray for those who receive it. Um, Lord, we pray that it would be beneficial to those who receive it. And Lord, in the process of giving it, may we learn who you are, and may we see your light. And we just pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. We've been uh, sharing uh, voices during this season of Advent, um, and we're going to have another voice to share with you tonight, but first we're going to look at our scripture passage. Let's take a moment to pray and so that we can focus on God's word tonight. Lord God, we just thank you for the opportunity to look at your word, and as we hear a story, maybe we've heard a whole lot of times before, help us, help it to shine new light into our life so that we can take your light and give you glory. And we just pray this in your name. Amen. So this, the gospel reading tonight that we're looking at is from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 2, verses 4 through 7. So Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea to Bethlehem, the town of David, because he belonged to the house of David and the line of David. He went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him, and was expecting a child. And while they were there, the time came for the baby to be born. And she gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in cloths and placed him in a manger, because there was no guest room available for them. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. So we're going to share with you a voice tonight. We've been looking at a voice every Sunday during the season, and tonight we, we hit the, the, the last voice that we're going to be listening to. And it is a, a voice of someone who attends our 8 o'clock service, a gentleman named Cooper Lagarde. Take a listen to him tonight. All right, so the topic of light. Uh, when I think of light, there's a couple of things that come into my mind. I think... First, I always revert back to Scripture. So Scripture, we'll start off right at the beginning, Genesis. God says, let there be light. And there's always a difference between light and, light and darkness. We through that see that through the Bible. And the way I look at it is being a light of the world. Um, as a police officer, I see a lot of, unfortunately, darkness, but also I see light. A lot of times when people call the police, they're not in their best um, time of their life. Either they're involved, either a victim of a crime or something went wrong in their lives. And one thing I always remember is wherever somebody is in their life, I think of Paul. Paul was started off as a persecutor of Christ, follower, you know, of the way. It wasn't called even Christianity then. It was the way. And he had orders from headquarters, I say, from the church, the, the Jewish church, to go to Damascus to unfortunately persecute those who followed the way. And when on the road, he was struck down by a light. God and Jesus said, Saul, Saul, why do you persecute me? At that point he answered, you know, who are you, Lord? And he said, I'm Jesus, the one you persecute. At that point he struck him with some blindness and then led him to Ananias in town that, that took away the, that blindness from him. And I look at that for a period of people's lives are sometimes blinded by what happens in life. Either they're jaded by the, the events that happen in life. And for me, I always believed in, in God and the Bible. And through, through college, actually, that's where I found Christ. I got with a group of uh, men and women that were Bible believers. And we used to have Bible studies twice a week, three times a week. And that's kind of where I really transformed and was revitalized in Christ. And when I graduated, um, I had plans to go to the State Police Academy, to which I did a couple months later. And while at the Academy, six months there, it was not the most inviting. And uh, I would say the, the love of Christ kind of went a little dull there. The light of it was kind of diminished a little bit just because of the atmosphere of it. And then when I graduated and went into the world of being a police officer and having that uniform on, people look at you different. But then I found out through a couple of incidents I was involved in seeing not the best people um, 
acting maybe the best they've ever acted before, that even in the, the darkness of days that we can be the light in someone's world, whether it be a smile, whether it be just a simple acknowledgement that their actions or their words are heard by somebody. And I think that we look at darkness, especially when Christ was on the cross, that from, I believe it was noon till three o'clock when Christ was on the cross, that it was dark over the whole, over the whole earth. And it was noted in the Bible that this happened. And then when he died, the, the curtain ripped in the innermost room. But then light came, as on that Sunday we know that he was raised from the dead. But also we go back to this whole Christmas idea that during this time he was born, that the shepherds were out in the field and the light shone around them and the angels told them that a town of Bethlehem Christ was born. In this light, we remember that no matter how dark days get, that Christ, when he was risen from the Lord, appeared before Mary, that you know he had the light. He is the light. I believe it's in Matthew chapter 24 that we know that Christ's return, just as lightning comes from the east to the west, that we know that his return is near. And as Christians, we look forward to that return. Whatever, it may be going through happy days, bad days, but we always look forward to his return. And with that, we remember that he is the light of the world, the beginning and the end, and the Alpha and the Omega. Well, there you have it. I can go home, and the message has been preached. And um, great job from a, a bright young man who is on track, who is living in the light. Thanks, Cooper. Knowing who he is, I'm not surprised. Thanks for the message tonight. It, it, it is definitely a blessing. We have been hearing different voices all during this Advent season. Um, and if you want to catch up on them, you could go to to YouTube or our Facebook page. For we heard um, as we celebrated the, the different candles and the, the attributes, we heard a, a woman sharing about her hope that she found after having a devastating stroke in her life. We also found um, and heard from a woman who found peace in the midst of her cancer journey. We, we heard about joy of of a young man that found joy in his career of finances, helping people find out that their money is not theirs necessarily. It belongs to God. And then this morning, if you were here, we, we heard two couples sharing about being married for over 60 years and how um, loading the dishwasher can be a challenge for some couples. Um, <laughs> It was great to hear them and how their love has endured for a long time and, and how it's stead, selfless. Um, and that helps us see the love of Christ, which is selfless as well. And tonight, we heard from a young man who has seen the light. One of the passages that we looked at tonight um, that Bev read was from the book of Isaiah. And it talks about the people who are walking in darkness. Now, to define darkness, we would have to go and to experience it, we would have to go to some place that had absolutely no light, right? And darkness is no more, so there is no light. Now, I don't know if you've ever been in such a place that is void of light, um, it is not a good place to be. The people were walking in darkness. No light around them. But you know what? It wasn't a physical darkness, like when you turn off the light. It was a spiritual darkness. One that was void of guidance. One that, that had no voice in their life. One that had no hope, no joy, no peace, no love. It was dark. But you might remember the Psalms, right? The Psalms tells us darkness is as what to God? Is as light to God. And you may remember this Psalm. Um, you may have heard it at a funeral. Psalm 23, which says, Even though we walk through darkness or the shadow of death, 
Who's going to be with us? God. So the people were walking in, in the shadow of death. They were walking in darkness. And the God that we love meets them there in the darkness. And he sends his son. For the people had seen a great light, a light in the darkness. So Joseph went also up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea to Bethlehem to the town of David because he belonged to the house and line of David. He went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him, and was expecting a child. A light would be born to the people walking in darkness, and the government will be on his shoulders. And and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace, of the greatness of his government. And peace, there will be no end. These people were distracted by the issues of their time. And some of these people, shepherds, were living out in in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. And an angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them. And they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. And this will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. The true light that gives light to everyone was coming into their world. Their darkness, their distraction, their hopelessness was going to be interrupted. This is the biblical story. If if you've been to a Christmas Eve service, and if you studied the Gospels, you probably have read it or heard it. And suddenly, a great company of the heavenly host appeared with the angels, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven and on earth, peace to those on whom his favor rests. And when the angels had left them and gone into, the, into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the, sh- the Lord has told us about. You know, the shepherds had to go to Bethlehem to see this good news, this hope for the hopeless, this light. This is the biblical story. This is our history. But have you noticed? Have you noticed? We hear it time and time again. We know the history. We've read the scripture. (laughs) But we haven't learned. There are still people walking in darkness. We heard the, 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 the voice of Cooper tonight, right? We heard from him that he is someone who has seen the light. And is someone who is walking in this light. You know, I connect with Cooper's story because it was in college for me, too, that I first saw the light of Christ. But Cooper also, if you heard his story, is a police officer and has seen darkness. So we can see from Cooper's witness and also from what Tiffany said in her children's message that it is a choice to choose this light and I have to concur with that each and every day there is a choice that I have to make or I need to make I can live in the light or I can choose darkness hopefully the light in my light life will overcome any darkness that creeps in because it does creep in and it's ever so subtle sometimes. You know, a good way to know if darkness has entered in is by looking to see if you have the fruit that it talks about in Scripture. Do we, do we show kindness? Do we show gentleness? Do we show self-control? <laughs> and you know what? That self-control thing 
is kind of hard this time of year because there's a lot of cookies out there and some of them are really good. And we're also asked, what makes you happy? What do you want? Self-control. How about joy? Do you have joy? Sometimes it's hard to have that joy. You know, this light that we're talking about, it is dramatic and it changes things. I loved that Cooper used the Apostle Paul in what he talks about. Um, We know the Apostle Paul was in a really dark place. He was killing Christians. He was persecuting. And he was a person that was walking in darkness. And on his way to, to go to persecute even more Christians, he has this encounter with an incredibly bright light. In fact, it was so bright that it blinded him, which it probably needed to do because Paul was a pretty determined man. But after this, after he sees the light, which is an encounter with the risen Jesus, he is changed. He is different. And he becomes one of the best, if not the most effective evangelist the world has ever seen. question for Paul is also a question for us too. What are we going to do with this light? Jesus tells us that we are a city on a hill. Our light should shine for all to see, that we shouldn't hide it, that it should be something that guides our way. You know, I, I think a lot of us do have the light on, but sometimes we have a dimmer on it, right? It's not as bright as it needs to be. What happens when the light is dim? Hmm. We stumble. We fall. Now, I've used this, uh, uh, this silly analogy before, but it's very true in my life, too. I live with a black cat. His name is Sam. And he's like my best bud. And sometimes, though, when my house is dimly lit and I talk to Sam, and I get no response, I turn the light on brighter, and I find out that I'm talking to a pair of shoes. For you see, when the light is not on all the way, we can be foolish. We need that light to be on, and we need it to let it shine. And you know what? We also need to pass it. We can't just hoard that light. You know, we celebrate the light coming into the world um, at this time of year. And and we light this center candle, which is the the Christ candle. And we welcome Christ into the world again. And you know the thing is that's that's beautiful about an advent wreath? I don't know if you've ever thought about this. But I was thinking about this today that it's surrounded by, the light of Christ is surrounded by hope, peace, joy, love, with Christ being in the center. And the thing that's beautiful about that for me is because only the true light can give us true joy, true joy. Love, true peace, true hope. The Christ candle shines. And we need to to find this light and these things, hope, joy, and love, and peace in Christ. Because when we find them other places, it eventually fails. You know, it might be part of of your Christmas tradition to come to a candlelight service, right? You you like to see the the lights be lit and, and travel throughout the church. It's beautiful to watch, really. One time I watched a service from another church, and you could see from above, and you could just see the light going through the sanctuary. It was beautiful. You might like to hold on to the candle and feel the wax dripping on your fingers. And then when you get home, you peel the wax off. 
But I want you to do something this Christmas. I want you to think about this light. And I want you to think about what it truly means. It means Jesus coming into our life. And you know what? That's good news. But it's also a news to, to call us to, to wake up. How are we living? Have we let this light transform who we are? Or is it something that we just pack away for next year to bring out again and light so that we can watch it travel through the church? So as you receive it tonight, I want you to do something for me. Think about how have I received this light? How have I let it transform who I am as a person? And then, as we pass it, we might want to think about how we are passing this light. Do we hoard it? Do we keep it in? So, I'm going to invite the ushers to come forward as we, we are going to, to do our traditional candle lighting. But I want you to think about this question, this final question. How is it with your soul this Christmas? Let's pray. Lord God, we thank you for the opportunity to shine your light, to sing silent night, to sing praises to you, to take this light, to lift it high, and to know that you have come to save mankind. We just pray that you would bless this time, and we pray this in Jesus' name. So we take the light, the light of Jesus. And we pass it on.
I wish you could see what I could see right now. It's beautiful. You all have the love, the light of Christ. And what a glorious sight that is. Let's take this light with us. We have to extinguish it now. But let us take it when we leave this place and let it shine. Merry Christmas to y'all and to all a good night. May the love, the, the grace of Christ, the love of the Father, the work of the Holy Spirit be with y'all. Amen. Collecting our candles, John? Is that what you were doing? Hey, you didn't have to preach, so at least you could do something up. <laughs>